if we can't sustain a ketogenic diet or stick to it ourselves, fasting helps you do that every single day. You yeah. just switch from burning glucose or glycogen for energy to making ketones from your own body fat. And it happens every day when you're doing time-restricted eating. It happens every single day. It's called metabolic flexibility. You literally teach your mitochondria and your metabolism how to use your own body fat for energy. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you're getting ketones to feed your brain cells and you have more mental energy than you had on your diet before. You are listening to The Foundation of Wellness, a refreshing take on diet and lifestyle. Join me, Marisa Moon, as we tackle modern health with innovative and ancient principles. I'm a certified primal health coach and intermittent fasting instructor at marisamoon.com. What's up, listeners? Thanks for joining me today for this super special episode. Before the pandemic, I was doing research on intermittent fasting for the distracted brain and the ADHD adult. As an adult with inattentive ADHD or ADD, which is interchangeable, I have learned how self-care and nutrition play a big role in the manifestation of my ADD symptoms and my energy levels and how that impacts my productivity and my happiness. And fasting is one of the most rewarding practices that I've implemented over the last six years on this journey, no doubt. So in the recording that I'm sharing with you today, I explain a bit about my own ADHD diagnosis and how the ADD brain differs from the neurotypical brain, which by the way, in a lot of ways you'll be able to relate whether you have ADD or not. And then I get into why and how fasting helps me in that regard. I go into more of the supporting evidence that makes sense of this theory that I have. And trust me when I say this is not just for people who have ADD or ADHD. You'll want to listen to this episode no matter who you are because it's really incredible all the benefits that we gain from fasting and we get into that in this interview as well. Most importantly, before we even get into that recording, I want to tell you about an experiment that I did using brain mapping with Dr. Sam Afara from Synapse Chicago. Dr. Sam stuck these electrodes all over my head. If you're watching the video, you can see pictures of it, kind of embarrassing. And he helped me test my theory on fasting for ADHD. We mapped my brain activity while I was fasting and then I ate a meal there in his presence, which was just a green salad with avocado and sardines and tomatoes. And then he brain mapped me again about 30 minutes after I broke my fast. And the test results surprised Dr. Afara and they confirmed my personal theory. So here are some of the details from my test results and this is the first time I'm sharing them publicly. So after breaking my fast, Anxiety and emotional responses seem to increase according to the brain mapping images. My slow theta waves, which are prominent in men, many ADHD subtypes and creatives, my theta waves increased after I ate, which negatively affects the frontal lobe processes like strategic planning, memory recall, and some executive functions. And this can translate for me into low motivation impulsivity and mood swings. Also, my low alpha waves increase after breaking my fast and this negatively affects my distractibility, my comprehension, learning, social skills, and it can even contribute to obsessive tendencies. So these changes were statistically significant according to Dr. Afara in that some of them were nearly a full standard deviation increase compared to my brain state when I was fasting. Dr. Sam said that this is not the case for everyone though because he does have experience with certain patients who perform better after eating. So that's an important detail to mention. Like everything else in health and nutrition, this seems to be very individualized and you have to determine what works best for you. 
You can even go see Dr. Sam Afara if you're in Chicago or anywhere near it and get this brain mapping done. He's done it thousands and thousands of times. He's an expert. He does all sorts of work with adults and children regarding the brain or even peak performance with athletes, etc. His website is synapsechicago.com and synapse is spelled S-Y-N-A-P-S-E. So this is the first time I'm sharing a recording from my Fasting for ADHD talks. I've talked about it several times now. I began sharing this theory starting in January this year on the Fasting Reset Summit. And since then, I've presented on a couple of podcasts like the Wise Traditions podcast and the Waste Away Intermittent Fasting podcast. And today's recording is actually from the Fasting for Freedom Summit hosted by Susanna Juteau, which you'll here in the interview. So shout out to Susanna because she is a registered dietitian and friend of mine and she's now known as the headache nutritionist. She specializes in helping migraine sufferers lead an energetic and mentally clear headache free life by way of nutrition and therapeutic fasting like she's done for herself. And you can learn more about her incredible story and services at theheadachenutritionist.com. I want to make it known that it's important to me to share this important message from today's episode, this theory, because fasting for ADHD has helped me so much, and I know it can help others too. So if you know of any podcast, summit, or organization that would like to feature me as a presenter on this specific topic, please do put them in touch with me so we can spread the message. I don't think there's anyone out there talking about fasting as a therapeutic approach for ADHD. Anyone interested can email me at marisa at marisamoon.com. All right, let's do it. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Fasting for Freedom, where I am interviewing some incredibly knowledgeable female fasting experts about all of the benefits of fasting. And today we have with us Marisa Moon. Hi, Marisa. Hey, I'm so happy I'm here. Thanks, Susanna. Well, I'm, I'm excited for this topic because today we're talking about uh, fasting for, as, a, as a benefit for mental energy and for ADHD relief, which is really cool because not many people are talking about this. No, I don't know if anyone is. Please reach out to me if somebody is because I haven't found a single person yet. Yeah, so that's awesome that you're able to like really hone in on this topic and be be the expert in the area. Uh, so what what first got you interested in in fasting, and how long ago was that? Well, I probably started learning about it like eight years ago, but I wasn't ready for it. You know, the idea made a lot of sense to me. I was just getting into ancestral health because I was dealing with IBS and all sorts of digestive issues, and I found a lot of answers in the paleo world. And so I fell in love with ancestral health, but I love food like a lot, a lot, a lot. I love food so much. I love cooking. Like it's a hobby, you know, and I was like skipping meals, like no way that's not going to be my thing. (laughs) But you know, this was very shortly after my ADHD diagnosis. I was diagnosed like in my late twenties. Oh, wow. Always looking. That's for rare then, right? As a, as an adult. To be well, it's actually or? more common for females. We okay. go through diagnosed because we just have different expression of our symptoms. We're just more internal with the experience and we can be quiet and not hyperactive. And so mm. we can go diagnosed as other things like depression, anxiety. Those are the things that I was dealing with. Okay. And when you find out, it's just, it's kind of a relief, even though you're, you're full of shame and all this confusion, but I was always looking for natural remedies because I didn't want to take medication. I still do sometimes. And I, I think it helps a lot, but it was a last resort for me. And I'm always looking for answers. And it kept bringing me back to intermittent fasting in my studies as a primal health coach uh, down the line. I kept learning about the benefits of fasting and I started to just connect the dots. I was like, man, if digestion is such a big deal, it's so labor intensive for the body, requires lots of energy and blood flow and resources. And the brain also requires lots of energy and blood flow and resources. How can I expect my brain to be working like on point when I'm at work during the day, if I'm digesting all this food? Right. That's when it clicked for me. I was like, Hey, like, 
making breakfast is not convenient. To come together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, it's, it's not like I'm starving in the morning. I've okay. skipped it so many times because I'm running late for something. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's all I got to do is just get breakfast. Sure enough. I mean, it was like so obvious to me. It made, it just works for me. And it always did from the beginning. But I think that's because I was already eating a very nutrient dense diet. So I wasn't dealing with like, you know, the low blood sugar crashes or constant cravings. I was really satisfied with this type of lifestyle from the beginning. Now, sure, I had to play around with it. It's, it's, it's all very exploratory in the beginning for anyone who first tries fasting. You can't mm-hmm. just expect to just all of a sudden be like a 16, eight faster. Like you really just have to like feel it out and see what works for you. And because of my ADD brain, I, I was had no problem with that. I don't like doing the same thing twice. So, just, <laughs> so you tried all kinds of things. <laughs> yeah. Just going with the flow. And, and then I would notice when I ate on the days that I would eat instead, mm. I noticed how much t- more tired I am. I mean, we've all had this experience when you eat and you want to just lay on the couch or take a nap or not oh, do anything. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and it happens to more people than just us with ADHD or people who are, you know, eating too big of meals or too many carbohydrates. It, it's actually more frequent than we like to admit. Sometimes food doesn't give us immediate energy. It requires a lot of energy. Yeah. And it's, and it's normalized to like, well, everyone's tired after a meal. That's just normal, but it's not. Exactly. It's, we, we don't have to fall for that. Um, so, so how did you come up with the theory that like, well, okay. You already covered that. Um, it really just started there, I have to say. Like, it just started there, and it wasn't even my theory yet. I was actually kind of embarrassed to say I have ADHD. So I just started coaching intermittent fasting and telling people, you know, it gives me so much more energy. I'm so much more productive. I can concentrate better. And I rarely mentioned that I have ADHD. I wasn't even okay. seeking clients with that type of, um, you know, they're looking for that type of support. So it just slowly started to like snowball where I'm putting the pieces together because I'm, I teach intermittent fasting in an online course that I created called Mm -hmm. intermittent fasting freedom and Mm -hmm. making all of the multimedia materials, the learning materials and teaching these lessons about fasting. I'm like, gosh, it makes so much sense why this works for my ADD. Why is nobody talking about it? Mm -hmm. And the more I started learning and sharing and becoming more open about it, the more I was inspired to pursue this as a theory and it's been coming together pretty amazingly i have to say just last week i did some brain mapping with a chicago psychologist named sam afara uh, okay. dr sam is is amazing he does this really cool brain mapping stuff and he can see all the patterns in my brain you know before and after fasting and we can compare them and i was like oh this will so be fun cool. to talk you know, whether I'm right or wrong, I still want to know. And yeah. he's like, wow, your theory is really impressing me because, you know, the differences in the wavelengths of, he's going to explain it all to me later this week. So I'm not going to try and get into it, but he okay. said it is significant. We're talking about one standard deviation, uh, um, less, a little bit less than that, but close to that. And it's incredible that we can see these differences after I've eaten that my brain and my ADHD symptoms are more obviously impaired. Wow. Wow. That's so cool that you're able to do that and really like test out that theory and wow. see what, what is changing in the mind because I that's, know. that's a powerful tool just to like to go back on and show people. And you have a lot of clients know. coming to you now saying like, Hey, I have ADHD as well. And like never thought of doing this, but it's working. It just started because I literally just started coming out with this and uh-huh. Um, before your summit, there was only another one other time that I'd spoke publicly about it, the fasting reset summit. And I'm just now realizing this is needed and people need me to be talking about it. So thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The platform to talk about it because there's so many. And then, so are there less, you said that women are usually diagnosed much later. Are there fewer women as well than, than men who are diagnosed with ADHD or? I don't think that's as obvious as it is anymore because now we know that women are underdiagnosed or girls are underdiagnosed. And there's just so much interesting research out there about ADHD. Like some adults think they just got ADHD when they were an adult and they didn't have it when they were a kid. But that was one of the criteria. Like you couldn't be diagnosed with ADHD if you didn't have symptoms when you were a kid. But now they're starting to see that 
it's because they were really active when they were young. So mm -hmm. they were in sports all the time. Maybe they were in track and field. They were always running. And that is an incredible remedy for ADHD symptoms. The brain really just thrives when you give it enough exercise. You, don't, you may not even realize you have ADHD, which is right. incredible. I mean, remember, ADD is a spectrum. So some people have symptoms that aren't impairing their life as much, and some have them that are so debilitating they can't even keep a job. It has nothing mm -hmm. to do with intelligence. It's just about the firing of neurons and, and, and utilizing all of the networks in the brain efficiently so that you can be you know, thinking clearly and organizing thoughts. I should explain, since we are getting into ADHD so much, for all the listeners, a lot of the things that I talk about today can apply to anyone who's lacking mental energy, uh, concentration, and just brain fog and things that you deal with on a regular basis. Because there's so many of us who have similar symptoms to individuals who've been diagnosed with ADHD. You may or may not exist somewhere on that spectrum and you may never know. But Absolutely. we all have similar working mechanisms up here. And uh, there are some obvious differences between the neurotypical brain and the ADHD brain. And when I say ADHD, I'm talking about ADD and ADHD. And, and all remedies and interventions doesn't seem to be a difference whether there's hyperactivity or not. I don't have hyperactivity. I have inattentive classic ADHD. And uh, they're all just classified under ADHD to confuse the whole world. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's the way it is. But our brains are different. I mean, they're structurally different. They can see this on brain imaging and brain scans, MRIs, all sorts of things like that. And there's blood flow, um, inadequate blood flow to certain regions of the brain re responsible for advanced thinking. Oh. And there's, yeah. There's, Is that how people are diagnosed? Is to do a brain scan or it's usually based yeah. on the symptoms? Yeah, okay. it's, we're not there yet. Um, okay. Unfortunately, it's just too... In it's too complex and results vary so much from individual to individual on the scans right. and things. So they really just go by how it's affecting your life, um, how others would explain your behavior, et cetera. Okay. And the neurotypical brain also utilizes energy a lot more efficiently than the ADHD brain. For instance, someone with ADHD has to filter out sounds, um, bright lights, computer screens, distractions in the environment, movement. And you may not realize that your brain is doing that for you. Uh, mm -hmm. Most people don't. Our brain is automatically doing it for us. But when you have ADHD, that can be a more energy intensive uh, experience. And it's happening all the time. And, and right. it's, it's sucking the energy right out of you. So we not only start with less energy to begin with because research shows we have reduced glucose uptake. So our brain cells aren't as able to use glucose for energy compared to a neurotypical brain, especially in women and adults, by the way. And not only that, but we have less efficient mitochondria, which if you haven't heard of mitochondria before for the listeners, this is where energy is created inside our cells. I mean, they outnumber our cells. We have hundreds in each cell and a quadrillion in the body. Right. And that, without them for seconds, we would die. I mean, that is literally how all processes are fueled. Mm -hmm. We have less efficient mitochondria. It, it can be- So really the ADHD good. brain has less efficient mitochondria. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the advanced regions of the brain, specifically mm -hmm. where I've been studying most because the ADHD brain suffers most in executive function uh, regions of the brain. So executive functions are like kind of like what they sound like they would be in a business. They're like the management system of everything going on in your brain. And it's only because of the most advanced part of our brain, the frontal cortex, the prefrontal cortex, the thing that makes us human. Mm -hmm. It's only because of that that lack of executive functions can be so debilitating like it is for some of us. Okay. And executive functions include everything like organizing tasks, um, switching from task to task and switching your attention, regulating your attention, your mood, your stress tolerance, your emotional regulation, um, mm -hmm. your, your concept of time, so many different things that we take for granted that are Absolutely. happening going on without us even thinking of it. But for the ADD person, it's more conscious. Like we have to deliberately make sure that we are organizing something or thinking something through, whereas for someone else, it's just effortlessly happening without much thought. And so if you can imagine, that takes a lot more energy. There's things happening unconsciously and consciously that the ADD brain is just needing energy for at a rapid pace. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. So 
so why do you feel like, why do you think the fasting benefits all that? Because I, I hear so many things just in you talking. It's like, oh, it could be affecting the mitochondria. It could be affecting the glucose. Yeah. It could, so what are some of your theories? Yeah, that's why sometimes it's hard to like contain the things that I want to share. It's like when you describe the benefits of fasting or the benefits of exercise. We can go on and on and on oh, and on yeah. and on. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, because it is just truly this incredible adaptive process that happens in the body and affects us on a cellular level. And when something affects you on a cellular level, it affects everything in your body. And that's mm -hmm. what's going on when we're fasting. So how it affects your energy, a great way to start is to imagine exercise as benefits. We know exercise is a hormetic stressor and so is intermittent fasting. And they have a lot of the exact same benefits because we stress the body just enough, not for too long of a sustained period of time, and the body reacts by becoming stronger and more efficient. And when we think about the benefits of exercise and fasting, we see that we get more efficient mitochondria, thanks to things like mitochondrial biogenesis, means like we're making new mitochondria. Mm -hmm. And autophagy, as listeners are probably hearing a lot about on this summit, autophagy is like our body's anti-aging, like cellular recycling system that helps us make energy and feed stronger cells without having any food coming in. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. And included in autophagy is mitophagy. So we get rid of this functional mitochondria and we feed with those recycled parts, new, better, stronger mitochondria that are more efficient with energy, most importantly. And I should mention the mitochondria are most densely packed in the frontal region of the brain, the most advanced part of the brain. And that is because it is so critical for our energy demands. And there's only one other place in the body with that much mitochondria and it's the ovaries. So if you can imagine oh. that importance is for reproduction, and now we have the advanced part of the brain for critical thinking with that kind of energy demand as well. Mm -hmm. So if exercise and fasting are helping us grow new mitochondria and grow new uh, neurons, literally neurogenesis, mm -hmm. and it's also boosting norepinephrine, which is lacking in the ADHD brain, and that gives us you know, the energy to pursue something or to take something seriously, stay focused and dopamine, blood flow. We all know energy helps, I mean, exercise helps increase blood flow to the brain. That's exactly what we need with ADHD. So all of this starts to make sense. And exercise is an incredible proven therapy for the ADHD brain, but like most people, we have trouble sticking to that as a consistent habit. Mm -hmm. And you can't expect it to keep paying off if you don't keep exercising. That's and so, I think that fasting is a great solution to achieve some of those same benefits for someone who has trouble finding an exercise routine they'll stick to. Mm -hmm. You can tap into a lot of those same things with the help of fasting. Absolutely. And then uh, with the help of fasting, our energy increases, and then maybe those exercise routines just become that much easier because you, ha you feel so much more energetic and you want to do things. Yeah, that's, that's true. Great that point. I've heard from just so many people that it's like, wow, my energy is at its peak. And now I'm just fulfilling all those goals that I wanted to do instead of like getting home from work and collapsing because I'm so tired or finishing a meal and just wanting to veg in front of the TV. It's like all of a sudden we have this extra level of motivation. Oh my gosh. Yes. Especially when you see something that really works. I think a lot of us are discouraged because we try new things that we hear about. We get excited about it mm -hmm. and then we don't get any kind of like immediate payoff and we just are defeated again. We tried something else. It didn't work and everything's just mm -hmm. hard. Life is just hard, right? Well, if you eat a nutrient dense diet and you take it slow with intermittent fasting, it will reward you right away. I've never coached someone who has said that they want to stop or they want to quit. The only people that do that are people who go too fast, too hard against all of my suggestions. I can't stop someone if they're excited to do it. I mean, I've, I've, I often make suggestions, hey, if we don't fix your stress or your sleep first, fasting is going to be too stressful on the body. Mm -hmm. But they want to do it. And I'm like, all right, here we go. And then, you know, they got to pull back because it is too hard. It's the same thing with exercise. Absolutely. You try to exercise when you, when you have like adrenal fatigue or something that makes you totally burnt out 
exercise is going to be successful. Uh, it's going to yeah. be painful and not want to continue. And then it, it doesn't become a routine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, that's really great to point out that first it's sleep and stress deal with those. And then we can incorporate some intermittent fasting or, and, and figuring out like, it's okay to kind of play around and figure out where, where it's best for you because there's no, um, there's no, like, you have to follow this. This no. is all that works. There's just so many options and you find what works for your lifestyle, which is what I really love about yeah. fasting as well. Yeah. Like, a lot of fasting experts probably would roll their eyes at some of the ways that I teach it because I like to throw most of the rules just like out the window. Like if you just eat the nutrient dense diet and you listen to your body, I don't care if you're having coffee with cream. I don't care if you're having bone broth. I think that any way that we can give our digestive system a break and any way that we can extend the hours that we are fasted overnight while we're sleeping mm -hmm. is a win. Let's compare that to everything we've been Absolutely. doing for so long as a culture. We've just been bombarding our body with the responsibility of constant digestion and, and toxic foods that I think starting there can improve so many lives. If we just drop the rules and think about how to make this your own, you have to figure out how to make it your own. If you don't do that, it's not going to work. And it is going to end up being like every other diet that's out there that you've tried in the past. For sure. For sure. Um, and I love just focusing on the energy I feel is something that everyone can, can benefit from. Like what you're talking about, you're, you're often referencing the, the ADHD brain, D brain. Uh, but really it's like, it's just everyone's brain. We all deal with some mental clarity issues or productivity or a uh, brain fog. And it's, yep. it's really fasting can help with all those and they're all interlinked. Yeah. Um, and, and the science is out there too. Like you don't have to take it from me. I'm just telling you that ADHD can benefit from this, but everybody talks about how it benefits the brain. Yeah. Everybody talks about okay. how fasting benefits the brain. It's amazing. And how it gives you more energy, mental clarity, all of those things. Mm -hmm. So I'm just kind of like tying those two together. And with my foundation of knowledge with ADD, it helped me able to make that connection. I love it. Yeah. yeah. And you're hearing probably a lot on this summit why we get so many benefits from fasting is thanks to the ketones that we tap into uh, for energy. Mm, yeah. Talk about that a bit. Yeah. It is important because the brain just loves ketones. I mean, when your brain cells and your mitochondria are running on ketones, some people estimate that you can get 20 to 30% more brain energy wow. just from that. Yeah. It's amazing. amazing. And the mitochondria yeah. just love ketones for energy because it's one less metabolic step and it's less yeah. oxidative stress and stress just in general on the mitochondria. So how can we have more of a ketogenic lifestyle and diet without doing a strict keto diet? Mm -hmm. We see in children's hospitals, finally, they're starting to implement keto diets to help children with seizures and other neurological disorders, but those are often comorbid with ADHD. So they're starting to see that ADHD symptoms are reduced or going away because these children are on ketogenic diets. Mm. But it's not easy to sustain a ketogenic diet, especially outside of the clinical you know, space. Mm -hmm. And so they're not even suggesting that a lot for ADHD because they think it's unreasonable. It's, it's too difficult to stick to. And it's too just, restrictive, especially yeah. in like elementary school and stuff. That's really hard to follow when your kids or when all of your friends are eating a certain way and you're not. Yeah. And yeah. I don't honestly, I can't say that fasting is, is good for children or anyone under 18 just because it's important not to em emphasize dietary restriction in any way, I think, mm -hmm. during those, those years. Although I think it's yeah. perfectly safe in general to be skipping a meal and things like that. But I do know that if we can't sustain a ketogenic diet or stick to it ourselves, fasting helps you do that every single day. You just yeah switch from burning glucose or glycogen for energy to making ketones from your own body fat. And it happens every day when you're doing time-restricted eating. It happens every single day. It's called metabolic flexibility. You literally teach your mitochondria and your metabolism how to use your own body fat for energy. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you're getting ketones to feed your brain cells and you have more mental energy than you had on your diet before. 
Absolutely. Yeah, that's oh, so powerful, isn't it? Wow. And to think that it's just getting popular nowadays or in the last five years and, and we've just kind of lost that knowledge that all of our ancestors have always had um, leading up to now. And it's just now that we're, we have food all around us and can eat at any point in time that we've kind of exactly. forgotten that it's okay to go out without food for a while and, and it feels really good on, for the body. Do you feel that uh, females need to fast differently than males? It depends. I mean, I understand the big commotion out there sometimes. Like if um, a stranger that's in the fasting arena sees me talking about fasting on a popular Instagram account, for instance, they might comment, fasting is not for women. It's not safe for women. Nice. And um, I... I understand why they're saying that their experience might lead them to believe that that applies to all women, but I am a woman. And ever since I started fasting, my life is better. I feel better. My menstrual cycle has not been affected by that. Um, I did choose not to have children, so I don't know how it affected my reproductive cycle, but I do know that my cycle never changed. Mm -hmm. And I teach my female clients and my followers that women need to be more conscious of the times that they are ovulating and the time of their cycle. Because mm. if you push fasting or a certain regiment of eating pattern that you're used to during the week of your cycle or the week of your ovulation, you, you are going to be stressing your body a lot because intuitively you are getting these instinctual impulses to eat more or eat something you don't usually eat. Mm -hmm. And if you fight that and you, Put off your meals because you're trying to fast you're really going against what your biology is telling you to do mm -hmm. and as women that's probably like the biggest you know takeaway that you need to remember if you're going into fasting even though some people say it's not right for women women have been doing it for thousands and thousands of years since humans have been walking this earth there has not always been food available and of course they, any food that was there they would give to pregnant women and give to children but in general women are just as capable of going without meals. Now, mm -hmm. what modern world and modern living does to women today that is affecting us on our stress levels, you know, that fasting can exacerbate, that's a different story. But in general, fasting is completely safe for women to do. I think everyone should aim for 12 hours overnight. Some fasting experts don't even consider that fasting, but right. I do because for so long, we've only been doing it for eight hours you know we, exactly and yeah, sometimes just, not even that because we're sleeping less and less as a society so if we're sleeping say six or seven hours a night then often you eat something right before bed and wake up and eat right away so some people eat yeah them just them. getting 12 hours makes a huge difference right there yeah so i think that's the word we need to get out is everyone can do this everyone should strive for 12 hours overnight mm -hmm. if you have a nutrient-dense diet you reduce your processed carbohydrates, you reduce your sugar intake and your toxic seed oils and inflammatory foods, and you up your healthy fats. Your body needs healthy fats. Your brain cells really need healthy That's fats yeah. and cholesterol from animal products. That helps to strengthen the myelin, the insulation around your brain cells. And guess what myelin helps us do? It helps you transmit messages faster between your brain cells, something that is impaired in the ADHD brain, but it's impaired in anyone who has been on a low calorie diet for too long or anyone who has an inflammatory diet or is experiencing brain fog. If you don't give your myelin what it needs, you're missing out on up to a hundred times faster transmission of messages between your neurons and the building wow. blocks are in an ancestral diet. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. incredible. Wow. And to think of all these years that we've encouraged people to cut down on their fat. And then like, I did it too. Brain, I did it too. Uh, brain function is compromised because we're not getting enough fat in our diet, but uh, it's, the, it's all about the quality fats. And the mm, exactly. I mean, there are big organizations that, that represent this country and the agricultural industry that benefit from us consuming more vegetable oils, even though they're not made out of vegetables, they're made out of seeds. These oils are highly processed and unfortunately they are inflammatory and very uh, big contributors to oxidative stress and inflammation in the body. Mm -hmm. So if you want to have brain function on point and you want longevity, you want anti-aging, you want to feel good, you've got to cut back on those processed industrial oils 
and start having more of the traditional oils, the ones that you could make yourself if you wanted to, like olive oil, mm -hmm. coconut oil, butter, re, um, rendered animal fats. If it's from a clean source and these animals lived on pasture, on organic land, got sunshine, ate a proper diet, those are nutritious fats. Humans have been eating them for thousands of years. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Focusing on the quality of diet, adding in some fasting, and and things will will start to improve for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. isn't fasting so much easier when you're eating nutrient dense foods? Absolutely. I mean, saying nutrient density, I know a lot of people don't resonate with that, but really it just means that you're eating foods that give you the most bang for your buck. It's like you're getting the most nutrients in that food that you choose to eat, like literally per mm -hmm. calorie, there's more nutrition there. And when you start eating like that, you get less cravings, less mm -hmm. like angry episodes or none at all. I don't remember the last time I said I was starving. I really don't. Right. Yeah. The hangriness has gone away and oh, yeah. yeah, you're just focused on quality foods, um, nutrient dense, as you say, and then you just feel so much more satisfied. And when you're focusing on that, then adding in the fasting and you've in your golden with the, the yeah. Pairing. Otherwise your body doesn't know like how to start making ketones. Your body's like so dependent on carbs and glucose for energy. Uh -huh. And your brain is so dependent on that, that it, it, you need this like transition phase that before you really can experience those benefits. So if you just go from a junk diet to try fasting, you'll see it all over the internet especially in the OMAD world, people are just like saying they're going to do one meal a day because they're eating like an extra large pizza by themselves in an hour window that they can eat and they don't want to change the, the rest of their diet. Uh-huh. But yeah, that's, a, the, that's my biggest kind of pet peeve is like, oh, you don't, you don't, you can eat anything you want. And it's like, well, you still want to focus on quality food. So yes, there's absolutely no restrictions. There's no foods that you can't have but you still want to focus on a good quality diet um to to really reap the benefits of, and of it's fasting way more enjoyable and way easier believe it or not mm -hmm. you can still have your pizza once you learn how to tap into this metabolic flexibility and and fasting is a part of your life you can make so many exceptions and and use this as a tool to clean up the mess you just made, for instance. Mm -hmm. if, if that's what gives your life pleasure and, and makes sense for you, I mean, our social lives and our eating culture is, is very important to some of us. It's a part of our identity. For me, that was a big, big part of why, why I resisted fasting or why I resisted going gluten-free or why I resisted eating a cleaner diet because I didn't want to be someone who was difficult to go out and socialize with. There's someone yeah. who was difficult at the, the dinner table or making other people eat things that they you know, don't want. Right. And I eventually found a way to make this my own. And that's really what I teach. That's why my intermittent fasting approach is so flexible. It's because people need that or they're never going to stick to it. Yes, I agree a hundred percent there. And just going back a bit, it, you you mentioned how it can take a while to to adjust to uh, using ketones and to become fat adapted. So how much time do you usually find that that takes for your clients? I mean, it really depends how long your metabolism has been screwed up. It it really does. I mean, if you mm. have a lot, a lot, a lot of weight to lose, and you have on all these medications, you're pre diabetic or diabetic. I mean, it's going to be a process, but it is immediately rewarding, you know, after the first few weeks. I always tell people, especially the people I coach and who, who I attract, um, you know, usually people trying to lose around 50 pounds or less. And a 21 day transition of just reducing your carbohydrate intake and eating more nutrient dense foods is all any of them need. They're ready to do a 12 hour overnight fast either right away or after the 21 days, definitely. And I teach everyone that, by the way, in the free bonus that I gave your listeners. So anybody who's listening, mm, you can yeah. grab my guide. It's at marisamoon.com slash IF freedom. And I call it the reset manual. Reset is an acronym that I came up to describe the five phases that I really believe are critical for intermittent fasting success and long-term results. Mm -hmm. and reset stands for reduce your carbs, eat nourishing foods, and start with 12 hours, extend your fast, and trust your instincts. Yes, love that. When you take it in or around that order and you pay attention to why each of those are emphasized, in my guide, I walk you through all of that as, as well. Then you start to see 
the power of metabolic flexibility, the magic of ketones being available for fuel. Our body stores an infinite amount of body fat. You can just keep on packing on pounds, but you can't keep packing on carbs or glucose or glycogen. You can, but they're turned into fat. Yeah. Fat is your body's survival you know, tank. It's like, no matter what, we always have energy here to use stores it all and yeah <laughs> but good to go. a lot of us can't use it because we're constantly eating and we're constantly eating carbohydrates so more fat just keeps getting added and our metabolism literally doesn't know how to make ketones from our own body fat so this 21 day phase helps to train your metabolism your your taste buds your brain everything you it starts to train you how to eat differently because a lot of us don't know what to eat if it's not between two slices of bread or on top of a bowl of pasta and mm -hmm. this phase is just enough time for you to start realizing that it's in your control and it's powerful because then fasting is easy life is better your mood is better your energy is better and you are honestly a healthier person yes awesome well that's a great way to end this <laughs> and encourage everyone to download the, that that pdf is is perfect so yeah, totally yeah, well, thank, thank you, so, you much. so much for coming on. This has been like a really enlightening talk and I love that you kind of, you simplify it all, right? It's not, it's not complicated. It's just no. eat well and, and do It's not my thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. The more complicated it is, the less likely I'm going to do it too. So I totally- Exactly. <laughs> it just confuses people more and more. So this has been great. Awesome. Thanks, Susanna. Okay. Thanks so much. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you. Well, what'd you think? I hope you enjoyed this interview because it really is something that can help so many people. If you know someone and can think of someone who might benefit from this information, click the share button, send them a link, and make sure you get this in the hands of the people who need it. Again, if you know anyone hosting a wellness podcast or event or a summit and you want to give this information to them as well that would be great because maybe i can present to their audience and spread it even faster people can contact me for speaking events at marisa at marisamoon.com and if you're interested in the brain mapping that i did from dr sam afara again his website is synapse chicago that's s-y-n-a-p-s-e chicago.com and our host today was the headache nutritionist susanna juto go to the headache nutritionist.com and learn more about her and her amazing free offers Thanks so much for being a fan of the Foundation of Wellness. Your support means so much to me. Bye.